Okay, surprise. Welcome back. We have a bonus edition uh, of Tide Pod on, on the YouTube home of Tide Illustrated for you on this Friday because – uh, we forgot to do our picks segment for the uh, the national games. We obviously picked uh, the score and our players of the game for Alabama in the preview we did for Vandy. So go listen to that. It's the last video uh, on this channel. Go check that out. Did a deep dive. Talked about the week for Alabama. Talked a little Diego Pavia and Vandy. Um, so, yeah, it's a good, good episode. But normally we do our picks segment. We pick five games at the end of that show. But we didn't include it this time. So we are uh, just going to do a, a little separate bonus video. Uh, Basically, so more funny. ways that Jack's trying to cheat uh, and uh, get around losing to me in picks. They're just just trying to avoid it altogether. First of all, we skipped week one. We didn't count those picks. I probably beat him like something five to zero if I if I'm just guessing. And then now we're trying to skip this week. So uh, I caught him. We're back for a bonus episode of Tide Pod, which let's let's go over last week because I think despite picking Georgia mistakenly, I think I did pretty well, right? You did, but and this is where I, I'm going to counter against these allegations because last week, the first game we picked was Louisville against Notre Dame, and I offered Tony because the, the spread was Notre Dame by seven. I picked Notre Dame. Tony picked Louisville. Notre Dame won by seven, so the bet was a push. I offered to let Tony get that point because he picked the underdog, and that's technically more of a risky pick, and he said, no, we'll accept a tie. So no points are being awarded for that game since it's a push, so that'll be our rules if the bet – I, unlike Jack, don't cheat and just like to get my wins authentically. I think that this is the I, I, I will never dodge these allegations, but I don't I don't believe I've we'll never dodged the these are, allegations because they are undodgeable. They are they are they are fact. Well, you are winning now, so I don't know what it's going to take for this to just be normal because you're up over you're up uh, nine to eight overall now. So you got I guess technically Notre Dame Louisville was a push. Oklahoma minus two against Auburn. What a game that ended up being. We both picked Oklahoma, so we both got uh, that one right. Game we both got wrong last week, Arkansas and Texas A&M. Uh, it was A&M by five. We both picked the Aggies. They won by four. So uh, we ended up getting that one wrong. Uh, my mistake of the week, we did Washington State against Boise State. I picked Wazoo. I was a believer. They started undefeated. I was hoping they could give the two-pack a miracle. I think they lost by 22 points to uh, <laughs> a guy two who – The two-pack. Two, and Boise State, I mean, man, Ashton Genty. I mean, we've, we've talked about Milrow uh, for a Heisman candidate on this show. That guy deserves his flowers. He's a stud. Boise State's running He'd back. Be in New York right now. He would be yeah, in New oh, York. Yeah, oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a legit – He's a stud. Uh, if you have not watched Aston Genty highlights, there was one I saw against Wazoo. He bounced off of like seven people and ran for like a 55-yard touchdown. So, yeah, the Cougars were cooked. That was a tough pick. And then we both got Kansas State as five-point favorites over Oklahoma State, and they also won that game by about 20 points. So not we weren't sweating out too much besides, I guess, technically Louisville-Notre Dame and uh, maybe A&M Arkansas. But, yeah, a, a, a good week for yourself. So technically you got – three right one wrong and then the push and i got two right two wrong and then the push last week right so there you go there there were our picks for last week so now diving and into I a new one week I fell on the sword for alabama fans by picking georgia you and, did and, and you that. did so, yeah yeah we, we talked about that and picked alabama and been undefeated so this is true we uh we talked about that in on the pod so yeah go go listen to that so week six now the other games, uh, I do have three SEC ones in here, so uh, or four actually. Technically, one one is an SEC Big Twelve game, but we'll get to that. Uh, let's start. Would you like to start with the biggest spread or the, in my opinion, the best game. game? Let's get better and better with the games as we go. Let's go. With, how about that? Like worst. Okay, so we'll do the biggest spread. Most spread. of these are pretty small, but I I did throw one in here. Auburn. On the road against number five, Georgia. I just wanted to see, because, you know, sometimes with these big spreads, you can sometimes goad yourself into thinking that they'll cover. Um, obviously, Georgia coming off a loss to Bama, dropped to number five. They are 22-point favorites at home against Auburn, which I believe is going back to Peyton Thorne fully this week. So I know you're not a Peyton Thorne guy, but what is your pick for that game? You got Georgia? Like, Peyton Thorne is actually low-key good other than that pick against Arkansas. So I got to almost stand corrected with my Peyton Thorne hate. 
Um, I thought about getting crafty and picking Auburn with the points, but then I remember this game's in Samford um, Stadium, and uh, I uh, Georgia never does anything like sneak. When's the last time? I'm probably like there's probably an obvious one, but like when's the last time like Auburn's won a notable game away from Jordan here? Yeah, that's a good question. I'll, I'll go don't. through their schedule. They just like don't do that. Um, so yeah, they're gonna get smashed, and like Georgia's trying to prove a point. Georgia's gonna be uh pissed about the the Alabama game, and really Georgia has no room for error error with you know Texas and Ole Miss and uh Tennessee still on its schedule. Does Georgia have uh Missouri on its schedule too? No. No, Georgia does not play Missouri. Okay. So like Ole Miss, Texas, and uh Tennessee, that's pretty good. So um they can't be messing around with Auburn. I think they're gonna come in and just boat race them. I'll take Georgia with the points. I think I'd take Georgia with like 30 points. Uh so the 22 doesn't scare me off. Yeah. Um I did find an Auburn win in 2021. They beat number 22 LSU in Tiger Stadium, if you consider that a big win away from home. They also beat number 17 Arkansas away from home that year. What was LSU's record in 2021? Uh six and seven. They finished six and seven. So <laughs> and Arkansas okay, exactly. Exactly, Arkansas yeah. finished. Arkansas finished nine and four. They won the uh, Outback Bowl over Penn State, so they had a decent year. Okay. So, so you know, what I'm saying that's like, yeah, yeah. No, it, it definitely doesn't happen, or it hasn't happened recently. Yeah, I, I feel like I can't bet on Auburn. I will go Georgia with the points, and and surely they're going to be. You know, the, I feel like I always lean on the bounce back game after either a, a heartbreaking loss or a tough loss to a good team. Obviously, Georgia just went through that. I think that they're just going to take their anger out. I'm a big, I'm a big like proponent of that. Like if, you know, Ole Miss, I kind of think the same thing too, which is actually a good segue. Cause that's our next game. You know, after a tough loss to Kentucky, I think they'll kind of bounce back. Didn't even really mean to do that, but that is the next game I picked with the next highest spread. The rebels in South Carolina this weekend as nine point favorites, number 12, Ole Miss now after of course losing at home to Kentucky in a, what would have been a backbreaker if this was still a four team playoff, but you know, could still be a backbreaker in a competitive sec, but Ole Miss got to bounce back this week. Would do you like them as nine point favorites on the road against a, a kind of frisky South Carolina team? I'm going to stick with favorites. It is a, a really interesting matchup because I don't love South Carolina, but I, their defense is pretty decent. Um, and we don't necessarily know too much about Ole Miss because, you know, we, we want Ole Miss to be good or like, I guess as a, as a nation or like, as a, like, you know, as a storyline, it's kind of like, oh, this is, we understand that Ole Miss can be good, but they played a pretty cakewalk schedule to start off with. And then they lose uh, last week. So we really don't know much about Ole Miss. Like what if Ole Miss is just an average team that we built up to be good? That happens a lot, not just with Ole Miss, but just in general with, we there's, you know, look, look at Florida state. You know, we thought Florida state was going to be good and they had a bunch of transfers on their team and they're garbage. So, I mean, I'm not saying that Ole Miss is going to be garbage, but like, what if they're not elite, you know, like what if, you know, and if they're not elite, those, that nine points, you know, um, you know, with, sandstorm playing and in and, and a really uh raucous environment in South Carolina I think maybe you'd go with the Gamecocks there but uh I am going to believe in Ole Miss I'm gonna give him another chance that's why I say bounce back game I say probably Ole Miss by by 10 so that that covers my uh my point spread I'm going to be different from you. I'm going to go with South Carolina kind of just for the reasons you all explained or you just explained. I, I like their defense. They kind of seem like they've gotten it together. Uh, you know, they beat Kentucky that old, which Ole Miss lost to. So you could go by that basic principle, um, you know, off of that, but no, I, I like the South Carolina team. They have a lot of athletes. Lenore Sellers seems good. This also, you mentioned, we're going to find out a lot about Ole Miss. We're going to find out a lot about South Carolina in the next few weeks. Cause I'm going to read you their schedule. There's an argument to be made they have maybe the hardest or one of the hardest remaining schedules in the in the country. They're home against Ole Miss, then, of course, at Alabama next Saturday, 11 a.m. on ABC, for those in, uh, who want another game time for that. At Oklahoma the week after that, then home against Texas A&M, then a game against Vanderbilt uh, on the road, then home against number 9 Missouri, then they play Wofford in their cupcake week, and then at Clemson to finish the season. So... South Carolina is going to probably have to spring one of these upsets. 
I mean, but here's a team too that I th- I'd probably is not getting enough credit when you look at it. I mean, they came a field goal away from beating uh, LSU, and all of a sudden we'd be talking about them being ranked right now, heading against Ole Miss. And if they were to beat Ole Miss, and they'd be, you know, probably like a top 15 team against Alabama. So we will find out about them. Um, it's kind of like the, you know we talked about. We don't know if. Uh, uh, Ole Miss is good yet. We don't know if like South Carolina is bad yet. Now the the thing I'll say about South Carolina is like they almost lost to Old Dominion in Week One, and so like they that kind of like that kind of scares me a little bit. But then you know, but then they were close against LSU. Um, they beat Kentucky. They beat Kentucky um, on the road, thirty-one to six. Yeah. yeah. So uh, they're probably a, a not bad team. We're probably looking at like a eight. You know possibly nine win South Carolina team. I, you know, I, I don't know. Maybe it's, let's see, they've got, you know, one, two, three, maybe, oh, I don't know. Yeah. The, the wins are going to be hard to come by, but like it could be an eight win team. You know, it's got the talent to be yeah. an eight win team, uh, even with the schedule yeah. coming up. So they're, um, they're yeah, I think Ole Miss would be, if you, if you wanted to get into that territory, you got to beat your Ole Miss, your Oklahoma, right. You know, your Vanderbilt's, but yeah, but it's, it's possible. They're, 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 not a pushover team. I think I think some t- we might have thought of them as that maybe heading into the season, but they're they're kind of a decent little team. They're, they're not great, but they're not bad. They have a freshman on defense named Dylan Stewart, who's an edge rusher, who's just uh, in a monster. And then they've they've kind of revitalized uh, people. People SEC fans will know this name, Raheem or Rocket Sanders, who was at Arkansas oh, yeah. forever. He's he, He's their running back now. He already has like 300 yards and four touchdowns on the ground through their first couple of games. So there's a little preview for South Carolina too, because of course they do play Bama. So there's some fun names on that team. I, we'll, we'll see Beamer ball. Um, so yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll, we'll differ on that. Next uh, highest spread actually is our only ranked matchup on this and the only ranked matchup of the weekend, uh, of course. And it's 11 a.m. in College Station on ABC Texas A&M hosting Missouri. The number 25 Aggies are two and a half point favorites at home at the time of recording against the number nine Mizzou Tigers. What do you, who do you like in this game? Give me your, go ahead and give me yours while I look at the, while I cheat and look at the availability report. Um, <laughs> I can tell you Missouri's only back. one is their, their wide receiver four is questionable. That is the only guy who is on their availability report. What are we looking um, for? What are we looking at with uh, Texas A&M? Um, so, yeah, the, I guess the, the background with this, obviously the story with Texas A&M, Connor Weigman getting hurt, their quarterback, and they've gone to this guy, Marcel Reed. Weigman is listed on the injury report, and there's kind of different thoughts from both sides. Missouri is convinced that Marcel Reed is starting this game. Uh, mm-hmm. Texas A&M obviously is going to play up. Oh, who's it going to be up until Saturday? Because that you know plays in their favor. So there's a little bit of semantics going on there um i i am of the belief also that is going to be marcel reed the freshman who has taken over for weigman a little bit more of a dual threat or running threat uh versus like the pocket passer that that weigman is but if you would like my pick in this game i'm going to go with missouri on the road uh this is a going to be a trench battle texas a&m is a really good d-line mizzou is a really good o-line um both the secondaries are pretty bad but I think if they do go with Marcel Reed, I think I trust Missouri a little bit more to slow him down. Texas A&M doesn't quite have the receivers, uh, and I think Mizzou beats him over the top and wins this one. I will go with Mizzou. How many points am I getting with uh, with A&M? Two and a half. Two and a half. Ugh, I want to be different. I really don't like A&M. They're a cult, um, and I'm saying that as someone <laughs> this. Uh, I just hate. I, I don't like the Aggies. I don't like them with a look. This is a team that, you know, beat uh, Bowling Green and Arkansas by a combined, what, 10 points. So I don't love that. I think Missouri is is uh, looking to prove that um, it's not just a overhyped team. Um, you know, they, they took a little bit of a, a backlash after almost losing to Vanderbilt in double overtime. So I'm going to go with – I'm going to take Missouri. If you would have given me like five points or six points, I think I might have taken AM, but I don't feel confident with that two and a half. So I'm going to, I'm going to take Missouri. Not a very confident I, Missouri, but I don't love the, the, the two points is, is, is not enough to sway me. 
So you're taking okay. So if I'm, thinking more of a, I'm saying that they would have given A and M more points. Like yeah, if I could, if I could have had more points to play with with A and M, I think I would have taken A and M. But okay, I'm taking Missouri. Two and a half is just not enough. I don't love the Aggies enough to enough to take them. Yeah. So, uh, in- all right. So we got the under the the road underdog in that one. Both of us do. Yeah, it'll be an interesting one. Wait, wait, wait. Um, wait yeah, A and M is favored. A and M is favored in this game by two and a half at home. Oh, yeah, for certain. Give me. Sorry, I I misheard you. Yeah, a hundred percent. Give me the 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 Tigers. Yeah. Um, I was thinking that I got like a few points to play with with A and M. No, 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 no. I thought that like I would be like they'd be helping me out with my A and M pick. <laughs> Absolutely not. Am I taking A and M to cover anything? But yeah, like no. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, that I, I no. was following there, but That's I was like, yeah, yeah. All right. I, I thought I was getting like A and M plus two point five, and I was like, yeah, yeah. maybe A and M plus six, I might do it, or A and M plus five, I might do it. No, Missouri's winning this game, so like, if, <laughs> if that's the case, then yeah. That's that's where I felt like your logic was. So I was just like, I you know, people make, but yes, A and M is favored by two and a half. And yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm yeah, very confident. I think the only reason why you say that is because it's in A uh, and M, it's in College Station. Station. Yeah. yeah. Um. All right. Next highest spread, a narrow one. This one's just kind of a funny game to me. It is an SEC Big Twelve battle. South, sorry, not South Florida, Central Florida, UCF. Two point favorites going on the road to Gainesville. How many times are you ever going to see that? Uh, yeah, against the, the Florida Gators. Um, a little like kind of North Florida or I guess Central Florida battle here. Um, geez, I, I, look, who did, who's uh, Central Florida coming off of? Because like they didn't look great, right? Central Florida lost to Colorado in its last game, forty-eight to twenty-one. Yeah, uh, big win for Colorado. Dion. And so they're a two-point favorite. You said against Florida, they are two-point favorites against the Gators mm-hmm. on the road too. This is in Gainesville. Give me, yeah, give me the Gators. Give me the Gators. Um, you know, I I don't feel great about the Gators. Um, but this is a game that Billy Napier needs to have. Um, they didn't look super great against Mississippi State, but they also won that game, and and albeit by 17 points. Uh, so they're definitely going to need this game because if they lose this one, they're certainly losing to Tennessee um, next week. So, you know, it, it could get rough for them if they don't. Talk about a team. Look, talk about a team that it's going to get really rough for. If uh, Florida doesn't win this game, when's their next win? Because they've got at Tennessee – Home versus Kentucky, I guess that might be it. Then they've got home versus Georgia at Texas, home versus LSU, home versus Ole Miss, and then they'll probably play in like the most mid uh, Florida Florida <laughs> State game ever created. But yeah, it's it's gonna be rough for the Gators. I, I I see them getting this win and maybe like their last win of the season. <laughs> like I, I really don't know, but I'm gonna take the Gators. I'm going to differ more because I just feel like it. I, I'm not confident enough in Florida to agree with you. And I think creating some, some difference is fun. So I'm going to take UCF here. Uh, this is a, an interesting UCF team. Obviously Colorado made a statement, which we have not thrown a, a Colorado bet in this, in this, uh, you know, act game yet, which I, I might have to, we might have to do that next week. Depending on yeah, they're, they're, kind of, they're kind of messing around. Yeah. And, and some people are even, I think what was the rivals account talked about them being a, a possible playoff team. Who knows? Yeah, it's. I mean, the Big Twelve is so wide open right now, which is which is wild. But yeah, Florida's got or uh, Central Florida's got KJ Jefferson, the former Arkansas QB. I've been all in on the former Arkansas players in this segment, but uh, yeah, Mal- they're they're a fun team. Gus Malzahn is head coach, you know. Exactly. Yeah, they're they're team too. Uh, I I will say from what I know, watch their recruiting space. They are they're they're pulling some names. They they've they've got it going down there with it. Uh, Central Florida. Also, uh, the, yeah, there you go. That's yeah. an incentive. It's also the uh, biggest university in the country. Do you know that by student body I, population? I that. Yeah. No. So I, I'll take the 80,000 loyal UCF night fans and we'll pick UCF. Uh, all right. Last one. This is our only one that does not involve an SEC team. And I thought this was just a fun one. Cause I feel like this has gotten the most attention in terms of where the line is at right now. It's the national championship rematch. Michigan 
going to Husky Stadium in Seattle to play a three and two Washington team that is one and a half point favorites against the number 10 ranked Wolverines. Washington just lost a heartbreaker, uh, I believe, to Rutgers last week, 21 to 18, and now plays Michigan. Do you like Jed Fish and company, the, the Kalen DeBoer replacement as favorites? First of all, can can somebody talk to ESPN about their beef with Fox, I guess? Because that's got to be it. Why? I, it's like ESPN won't go to the Big Ten now for, for a game day. I mean, like, how is Cal Miami the <laughs> game day game when you have a literal repeat of the national championship game? I don't think this national championship remake is going to be like a great team. I think both teams have fallen off significantly from that game. But like. Come on. If you look at the matchups this week, this is the week to go. I think part of the reason why game day is not there is because it's a Big Ten game. I think there's a little bit I'll, of a... I'll, I'll correct you in part. It's on NBC, but your point still stands. ESPN having oh, beef with another okay. network. But it is it is on it is on a different I network. That, like Because the Big Ten... Yeah. I'm going even, even bigger conspiracy, Jack. I'm going they don't want to hype up Big Ten teams because of Fox. That's what I'm going with is... I don't. Um, I don't necessarily disagree with this theory. Yeah, I mean, I have put zero research into this. Um, I'm going straightly, uh, like purely off of vibes. So I'm sure that like, like some ESPN person could correct me and, and and probably end this argument in like three seconds. But I don't know. I just thought that it was absolutely outrageous that this game wasn't the game of the week. I'm so outraged by that. I forgot the line again. So you got to give it to me. It is Washington. Minus one and a half. There are favorites at home. The game is in Seattle. The game is in Seattle. Hmm. I'm going to take Michigan anyways. Um, I just, I'm, I have not done a lot of research on uh, Washington, but I know from last year's team, like it feels like the majority of it is either here in Tuscaloosa or in the NFL. I, I, I don't even know how, I mean, I know Jed Fish probably brought in a lot of people from Arizona, but like that team was absolutely gutted. So was Michigan to be fair. But um, this is a Michigan team that just beat USC. Uh, give, give me the Wolverines, even on the road. Um, the only thing I'll say is maybe a little bit of revenge factor. And it is yeah. you know, being played in Seattle. So it could get a little interesting. Uh, but no, I'm still taking Michigan. Sorry, Kalen, if, if you're listening. I'm sure he probably wants his, his former Huskies to win. I, I will say I'm looking at Washington stats. Uh, another name SEC fans will be familiar with. I promise it's not a former Arkansas guy. Their quarterback is Will Rogers from Mississippi oh, yeah. State. He's having a pretty good season. Uh, he's completed set almost 75% of his passes, 1,300 yards, 10 touchdowns, no picks so far this year. So he's had, he's had kind of realize. a nice start. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I did realize that Will Rogers. There was a – yeah, so um, that's a, that's interesting. You know, I think, yeah, there was a little that's, I think a lot of people thought maybe like – uh, back when you thought that the board needed a certain kind of quarterback to, to run his offense, I think like the, that initial panic of uh, when Kalen Boer was the board was hired, I think there was like some chatter of like, oh, will Alabama go after Will Rogers? I remember that now that now that you say that. Um, yeah, I think they're I think they're just fine with Jalen Milrow. But um, yeah, um, yeah. So you, you're going with the Huskies? I, I sort of want to flip just to kind of be fun. I will say, even though they have two losses, they have not allowed more than uh, – They've only allowed more than more than 20 points once they, they haven't in their wins. They haven't let a team score in double digits. So maybe maybe a sign of an OK defense. Not that that's really playing anybody. They lost to Wazoo and Rutgers in kind of a heartbreaker. And it's it's a one and a half point game. You know what? Just to make us differ on three games. Why not? I went to Washington State last week. I, I'll go Washington. Go dogs. Go do dogs. they say that? Do they say go dogs? Yeah, I think they do go dogs, and then it's the they do oh. this W. If you're watching on the YouTube, the, um, the Jameis Winston crab leg. Ex exactly. Yes. Yes. They do the eat the dub dub. Um, yes. All right. There you go. So to run it through again, uh, Auburn, Georgia. We both got Georgia covering the 22 and a half point spread. Uh, you went with Ole Miss as nine point favorites at South Carolina. I went with Gamecocks. Uh, we both went with Missouri as two and a half point dogs against Texas A&M. You went with Florida as two and a, as two point dogs at home against UCF. I went with the Knights and I went with Washington as one and a half point favorites against Michigan. You went with the with the Wolverines on the road to, I guess, repeat, go two for two uh, in in downing the dogs in a much lower stakes game, but a kind of fun game nonetheless. And I completely agree with your 
college game day take. There have been a, a few strange selections this year, uh, for sure, with with that one and South Carolina LSU, which ended up being a good game. So I guess I'll digress that one. But yeah, Cal Miami. We uh, do, do you want to throw? We we won't count this one. Right, and the Coke, what is it, the Coke versus Woke? I kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a there's That's been a lot of, of jokes about that one. Let me find the line for us. Oh, it is at. 9 30 p.m. from California Memorial Stadium in Berkeley. The Hurricanes, 10 point favorites as the number eight team in the country, coming off that crazy uh, result against Virginia Tech on the Hail Mary. I'm going three and one, by the way. I'm going woke. I'm going woke. I don't think they're going to win, but 10 points at home. Yeah. They're going to, they're going to cover with the points. So go Cal, Cal with the points. No, Miami's ten point favorites on the road. Oh, yeah, you Cal. Said Cal yeah, 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 no, no. yeah. Cal We've got with, Cal covering. Cal would not have won without the points, so Cal needs the points to win. So you, did, I'm thinking are you Cal to it? lose, but to win, like to okay, win. Okay, okay, that's that was my next question. No, no, you how you say it? Am, I, am I wrong in that? Like winning, winning the game. I thought you said I. The confusion I was was I thought you said Cal to win the game in addition to covering. I thought that's what you said. No, but no, I, I, I misheard you. I will pick Cal. Because ten points is still a lot of points to be given when right. you're still at. Yeah, I, I wanted to hear you say you were confident in the in the Golden Bears to just knock off. I'm not that confident, but I mean, like, yeah, you know, they do. What what do they say about going woke though? So, you know, <laughs> woke go uh, They are th they yeah. are three and one. Uh, their last game, fourteen to nine loss at Florida State. So, which was the Seminoles' first win of the season, by the way. That is, that's rough. Don't um, make me feel. No, I'm still sticking with it. I would probably go Miami. Cam Ward is really good. Really good. Would also be in New York with with Ashton Genty and Jalen Milrow. Uh New York right now, if you ask me. I guess it'd be it'd be Milrow, Genty, Ward, Hunter. That's gotta be your four. That's it. I, I think that's say. the only four. Yeah. 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 I, I I don't know. I don't know who that's else would maybe come game. close. Yeah. 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 I think that's gotta be your four. Which I is like a very fun non quarterbacks in there. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, I think your your fifth is maybe maybe Shadur Sanders with the way Colorado's played, but he feels like a little bit more outside. Not especially him considering, him I think they're gonna have right to. A, a guy on his own team has been has been far better. So, um, yeah, there you go. All right, those are our picks for for the week. We're locked in. We'll come back uh, obviously for our next game preview and recap those. See how we did. Enjoy the college football slate. Enjoy the Alabama game, of course. If you're going to Nashville, especially. I uh, saw one guy on our board who got the hotel that overlooks the stadium, so he doesn't even need to buy a ticket to the game. So shout okay. out to that guy. And uh, yeah, we'll be back for a recap of that game. <laughs>